gonna jump down, spin around, pick and fail the cotton. Gonna jump down, spin around, pick and fail the day. Jump down, spin around, pick and fail the cotton. Gonna jump down, spin around, pick and fail the day. Had a little woman, she can pick and fail the cotton. Had a little woman, she can pick and fail the day. She's my woman, she can pick and fail the cotton. She's my woman, she can pick and fail the day. Oh, Lordy. Jump down, spin around, pick and fail the day. Jump down, spin around, pick and fail the day. Jump down, spin around, pick and fail the cotton. Gonna jump down, spin around, pick and fail the day. Had a little woman, she can pick Bale of cotton, had a little woman, she can pick a bale of day. She's my woman, she can pick a bale of cotton, she's my woman, she can pick a bale of day. Oh, Lordy, jump down, spin around, pick a bale of day. Oh, Lordy, jump down, spin around, pick a bale of day. Gonna jump down, spin around, pick a bale of cotton. Gonna jump. Howdy. Good morning. Morning. Mighty nice day. Yes, it is. Mind if I ask a, a personal question? No. Well, uh, what are you doing up in the tree? Oh, well, uh, the baby bird, it, it fell out. Have you uh, thought about how you're going to uh, get down out of the tree? Down? Oh, well, I, uh, uh... Here, let me help you. I'll give you a little hand. You gotta trust me, Nana. Oh! Get your hands off my daughter! But, but, Quiet! I suggest you go about your business, young man. Fair-weather friends, that's all they are, every last one of them. Well, Cincinnati's, it's plowing time, and you can't expect farmers... I can't expect a darn thing ever since they passed that blasted whiskey tax. Ever since I emptied that last keg of whiskey, there ain't been nobody in here but females. Ben, you don't suppose they'd repeal that there fool law, do you? you know, I was down to Salem the other day, and I hear folks talking that Congress just might be changing their mind about that there tax. Yeah. Yeah. Howdy. Morning. I sure could use a drink. We got some apple cider, and that's all we got. That's all right. Nothing I like better than good apple cider. Let's see now. Is this, uh, Boonesboro? It surely is. How about that? I'm only a mile away. I feel like Moses coming out of the wilderness. <laughs> Listen, one mile away from here is going into the wilderness, not out of it. Huh. Where are you bound? Uh, New Harmony Village. What? You folks new around here? This is my tavern. I'm Cincinnatus. Jim McGill. Yeah, uh, Mr. McGill. I'm Ben. ben? I work around here. Have a nut. Thank you. <laughs> now, what were you saying? The, the new what? Oh, sir. <clears throat> it says right here, the new uh... Harmony Village. Is there something wrong, Ben? Where'd you get this? Back home, uh, out, outside of Williamsburg. Did you pay money for it? You might say my life savings. Why? Who sold it to you? Well, it says right here, an authorized, uh, an authorized agent of the Daniel Boone Land and Development Company. The what? The Daniel Boone Land and Development Company. Look, there is a Daniel Boone, isn't there? Oh, yes, there's a Daniel Boone, all right. That's a complete swindle. That's a fact. Yeah. And a forgery. Reckon so? Well, I don't know. We'll have to do something. We? It's your land and development company. It ain't ours. A friend in need. I don't know what to say, Jimmy. It's, it's, it's just nothing. I've been carrying this thing for a good long 300 miles, Mr. Boone. Been keeping it dry in all kinds of weather. And every time I camp, I read the print clear off the page. You might even say I know it by heart. But look, that's your name, right? So snaps, you got a quill around here someplace. Right over here, Daniel. 
Jimmy, this is my signature. Do you ever see anybody so prime, first class, A number one, stupid? Not lately, anyway. How did you ever believe all of that, anyway? What did it say here? Two room cabin and cleared land and Indian servants. How come you left that part out about the blue eyed, curly headed, blonde wife, huh? Oh, oh no. You didn't read the small print. I need to rub it in, Ben. I guess I got it coming. But when I dream, I really dream, don't I? I don't suppose there'd be any chance of finding the swindler who... He's not likely to be waiting around for me. Thanks anyway, Mr. Boone. Jimmy? Better go see if I can find a way to earn my supper. Oh, here's your map. Well, that, uh, that is a strange battle. Yeah. You know, he's not your responsibility, Daniel. Oh, I know it, Ben. He took it like a man, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Well, put yourself in his place. I sure wouldn't mind. What is Rebecca cooking up for supper anyway? Always thinking about your stuff. Yeah. just the trouble. Sometimes you don't know whether you can do something till you fall on your face a couple of times. Becky, you know that nice piece of land we have over on Bluebird Ridge? Listen, you're going to have to stop reading my mind. Why, it's my favorite form of entertainment. Well, makes me itch. <laughs> Well, you can take a nice bath in the creek on your way over there in the morning. Jimmy, come in here. It's good soil, Mr. Bolt. A man couldn't ask for any better. And all this. Well, this is about the prettiest place I've ever seen. But I've got no money to pay you for it. The Daniel Boone Land and Development Company. Well, you don't have to pay me right now. You can pay me a little of time whenever you get ahead. I'm pretty sure Cincinnati would uh, give you credit for seeds and supplies. 
sure is tempting. Tell you what. Let's go see Simpson Hunters right now. No, sirree. I ain't hanging that thing in my tavern, and that is final. I was told you'd see in the life, Cincinnatus. You aren't selling any whiskey, are you? You can just stop that smirking at me, Amos Brown. If I ain't selling any whiskey, it ain't because of your pits of hell. It's because of that dead blame whiskey tax. Well, it's a comfort to know that the Congress is there to place a restraining hand on the arm of the intemperate. If there was one thing I thought I'd get out of all this, is not listening to one of your fool lectures. Uh, now, all due respects to you, Miss Charity, that is one of the finest jobs of sampling making I've ever seen. But this is a tavern, and I am a tavern keeper. And you know what the first job of a tavern keeper is? Have you selected what you want, daughter? Yes, Father. It is selling whiskey. How much? Oh, one dollar and fifty cents. Well, howdy, Cincinnatus. Channel. How are you? Hey. Jimmy? Amos? Uh, Mr. Brown, I'd like you to meet your new neighbor, Jimmy McGill. Neighbor? Uh, Mr. Brown farms the other half of Bluebird Ridge. Yes, we, we met on the trail yesterday, but we weren't introduced. Oh, and this is Miss Charity Brown. Do you mean this young man has purchased that land? Well, uh, Amos, we've entered into sort of a long-term arrangement. Well, I guess it makes it all complete. I beg your pardon. Why, just that I found out the prettiest girl I ever saw lives on Bluebird Ridge. Do you have a family, Mr. McGill? A wife? Oh, no, sir. No, I'm by myself. Perhaps, Father... Yes? Perhaps Mr. McGill would like to take his meals with us until he gets settled. Since we're his closest neighbors... I'm sure Mr. McGill can fend for himself. Come along, Charity. But on the other hand, you might like to join us for Sunday services. I sure would like that, sir. Good. Mr. Samuel Stone will be with us. Charity is betrothed. Father? Yes, daughter. Why did you say that Samuel Stone was my betrothed? Because he soon will be. But I don't like Mr. Stone. Don't be foolish, child. Samuel Stone is an upstanding, God-fearing young man. How can you not like him? He... he never smiles. If Samuel isn't frivolous, it's because he spends a good deal of his time wrestling with the devil. Father... Besides, he's a very prosperous farmer. I'm not getting any younger. I will never consent to your marrying anyone who could not take care of you. It's the last promise I made to your dear mother. May her soul rest in peace. Wouldn't mother have wanted me to be happy? I know she would not have liked this unseemly discussion. Yes, Father. Well, here you are. Well. Drat that Amos Brown. He left that thing here on purpose. I know he did. That's kind of pretty. The charity sits up. I hope you ain't one of these demon rum folks, too. Oh, no. no I, I just think uh, folks are entitled to their feelings. You know, Cincinnati's going to take me about 100 years to pay you back for all of this. I wouldn't say that long, Jimmy. You do a little trapping in the winter like the other folks around these parts, and we'll likely be squared up in a couple of years. No, you don't need money much around here anyway, Jimmy. It's fish in the stream, game in the woods. You grow almost everything else you need. Well, almost everything. I got this. I, I thought I'd just drop it by. Oh, thank you very much. Mr. Brown, you have a very nice house. Thank you. You seem to be a very sensible young man, Mr. McGill. Why, thank you, sir. So it should be easy to make you see things clearly. Charity is spoken for. But even if she weren't, 
Well, I take it that that mule is the sum total of your worldly goods. I may not have many worldly goods, Mr. Brown, but I do have a good pair of ears. You all feel free to drop by my house any time. What house? That's right. I really forgot I don't have one yet. So long. And that, my dear daughter, is that. Unless I have raised you for 17 years to suddenly find that you have become disobedient. No, father. Mrs. Samuel Stone will be allowed to have a looking glass either, do you? <gasps> Miss Charity Brown, you are a sinful young woman. You must strive harder for perfection. Oh, but Mr. Stone, it was just the teeny weeniest little smile. I hope I shall prove worthy of your confidence, Mr. Brown. As you know, I'm always striving for perfection. I'm aware of that, Samuel. And that's why I feel that you and Charity should be married sooner than we discussed. Well, I, I trust that she hasn't uh, strayed from the path in some way, sir. She is my daughter. But she is a female. And as such, a frail vessel at best. Well, the sudden haste wouldn't have anything to do with the young man who just purchased the other half of your hollow from Daniel Boone, would it? Who can tell what disguise the devil may assume next, Samuel? Now, suppose we work out the details, and uh, then we'll have my daughter join us. Dear Lord, I've always tried to be your faithful servant, and I'll always do the very best I can. I'll marry Samuel Stone tomorrow, if that's what Father says, because I do honor my father. I do. Just let me have... One hour, Lord. One hour of... One hour of what, Charity Brown? Maybe he is the devil in disguise. The dowry, of course, will remain the same. I was hoping we could discuss the matter of Mrs. Brown's... May her soul rest in peace. Silver. And what did you have in mind? Well, naturally enough, I assumed that since Charity is your only child, that you wanted to bring the silver into her own home to pass on to her own offspring. I thought you might like some bread. I just baked it. No, wait a minute. No, why don't you stay and, and share it with me? Well, it, it's not seemly. No, I, I guess that wouldn't be right. I, I was just trying to be um, neighborly, not familiar. Well, of course. I understand. Uh, out here on the frontier, a, a person has certain obligations to new settlers, and, but only so far. D don't you think? Oh, well, definitely. Oh. As a matter of fact, since I'm new in the area, I'd appreciate some of your views on that subject. Uh, for example, you could tell me about some of my neighbors. Now, I've met uh, Mr. Boone and all his kin, Ben, Cincinnatus, you, and, and your father. And, uh, well, I just think a fellow should know more about his neighbors. Don't you? Yes, I suppose so. 
uh, for example, uh, tell me about Mr. Samuel Stone. Uh, just for example, is he a real nice, neighborly type fellow? Well, um... Well, that's very interesting, Miss Charity, but it's not very informative. Well, you see... Look, maybe you could talk a little bit if we went over and sat down, huh? Well, maybe just for a minute. Do you have to do that? To do what? Smile. What's wrong with smiling? Well, that's what the devil does. Everybody says so. What, he smiles? Come on, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Well, how do you know? Because it just is. Smiling is a perfectly natural thing. It's, it's like grass growing. Why don't you try it? Oh, Father would be ever so annoyed. Oh, come on, just one little smile. I'll thank you to remember I'm only staying here to help you get settled, Mr. McGill. I'll have nothing to do with any frivolity. No more smiling. Well, um... What were you saying? Uh, no, y you were telling me about all my neighbors. Oh, yes, yes. Um, Mr. Samuel Stone. Well, Father just dotes on him. You mean on his money? I am leaving right now. No, don't do that. I didn't mean what I said. I, I just got a little riled up when, you, when your father said... when he talked about the sum total of my worldly goods. Well, he's just looking after my welfare. I know, but what about you? I don't understand. Well, your welfare is one thing. But you're another. I still don't understand. Look. If I had a canary bird, and I was concerned about his welfare, I probably would put him in a cage, and then I'd be sure that he'd be fed and watered and everything. Now, but if I really cared about that canary bird himself, well, that's another matter altogether. Well, then what would you do? Well, if you were a canary bird, what would you want to do? Sing and fly around? Right. Now you got it. But I'm not a canary bird. Maybe not, but you got some awful pretty feathers. Why don't you take that off? <laughs> Goodness. See, I told you you could smile. <laughs> oh. Please? What if I ran up behind you and just grabbed it off? I crossed my heart and you just disappear in a puff of smoke. Give me back my bonnet this instant, you devil, you. Well, if you really thought I was a devil, you'd be a little more scared. I am so scared that... Oh, no, you're not. What? <gasps> and I'm real pleased to meet you, too, Mr. Stone. We are just talking about you. Get up. What? What for? The hand of the righteous is what you need. I don't know what that's going to prove. Start packing up your belongings. What for? Because you're going to be off this land before the day is out. I don't know how you're going to manage that, Mr. Stone. I like it here. Now, daughter. Father, does it have to be so soon? Three months isn't too soon, my dear. Have I ever done anything that wasn't in your best interests? No. And have you ever seen Samuel do anything that was unchristian-like? He punched Mr. McGill in the jaw. Well, you have to admit that the provocation was uncommon. I suppose it was. Now, I know that I am the most fortunate of fathers. You could disobey me, 
That seems to be the way with children these days. But you're a sweet and reasonable girl. Thank you, Father. Now, why do you think I want you to marry Samuel? Because I worship riches? Well, because he is a godly man, I suppose, Father. Partly. But that young man in the woods back there, he too might well be a godly man. I don't understand. It's very simple, really. The wilderness is a killer of women. Hard work, childbearing. Sometimes a settler's wife may often look 60 when she's only 30. It was my struggle against this land that killed your mother. And I've sworn that the same will never happen to you. Now do you understand? Yes, Father. And will I hear you singing at your work once more? I will try. Good girl. Father? Yes, dear. Since it's all been settled, does Samuel have to drive Mr. McGill off of his land? Does it mean so much to you? No, but he hasn't done anything. It's yet. really not your concern, is it, dear? Samuel, I'm afraid I've already sold that land. You mean papers have already been signed? No, but I've given my word. Well, I'll give you twice the price. You don't seem to understand what I said. I said I'd given my word. Three times the price. Samuel, you don't need that land. Jimmy McGill does. I'm not concerned with that person's needs. I'm making you a business proposition. And I'm turning you down. I'm coming back if I go 10,000 miles. Oh, who will shoe your foot? And who will glove your hand? Who will kiss your ruby lips when I am gone? promised land Oh, it's me who shoe your foot It's me who glove your hand And it's me who kiss your ruby lips When I am gone To the promised land I'm going away for to stay a little while, but I'm coming back if I go 10,000 miles. I'm going. Take you 10 years to clear the land at this rate. I know it. Say. Hey. Just what did you do to Samuel Stone, anyway? I kissed Charity Brown on the cheek. Why? Well, he tried to buy your note last night from Daniel. Offered him two, three times the price for it. He didn't sell it to him. No, Daniel wouldn't do a thing like that. Doesn't matter anyway, I guess. Hey, would you mind standing up? I want to kick you in the pants. What for? Because I feel like it. That's what's for. Yeah, I guess I deserve that, don't I? You're darn right. Listen, there ain't nothing standing between you and Miss Charity Brown that you can't earn in 10 or 20 years of back-breaking labor. I better get to work, then. Hey, you got another axe? Sure do. Give your hand. Hey, Ben. Yeah? What would you think about a fella abandoning his principles? Yeah, it depends on the principles. Well, 
Suppose it was for a just cause. Well, depend on the cause. Not very much help, you know that. What are you thinking now? I'm about to break a solemn vow. You want to come? No, sir. I can't let you do it. It just ain't legal. Cincinnati, whatever do you mean? What have I asked for that was illegal? Well, look, some sugar, some yeast, and some kettles. Why, it sounds downright wholesome to me. Do you think I was born yesterday? Sometimes it pays for a fellow to pretend like he was. Why don't you just come out and tell me what you mean? Since you were just born yesterday, you wouldn't understand anything I was saying anyway, now would you? Cincinnati, it sure is lonely around here. Sugar, yeast, and your kettles. Oh, I didn't ask for that. Well, you never know when an old whiskey keg might come in handy. I ain't got no use for it, that's for sure. I don't know. What do you think, Ben? Oh, they'd be nice to put some flowers in it. Cincinnati. I'll plant some nice flowers in it, and when they're growing real good, I'll bring it on back, and you can sort of use it to dress up the place. Jimmy, I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Hey, you sure you know what you're doing? Of course I do. Well, then, maybe then I'll give you a hand. Ben, I don't know whether you even ought to be here. Like Cincinnati says, it's illegal. It ain't illegal to make the stuff. It's illegal to make it, sell it, and not pay the tax. I don't plan on paying the tax. I can't make any money that way. And you're aiming on going to jail. No. I'm aiming to marry Miss Charity Brown. You sure are a hard fellow to figure out. You know that. What do you mean? Well, you come marched into Boonesboro like one of them everyday farm boys with that worthless deed. And next thing you know, you're engaged in, in the manufacture of whiskey. And you're courting Miss Charity Brown, who happens to be betrothed to that, the richest fellow in, this, in these parts. And then you're talking about broken vows and all that. I guess it does seem a mite peculiar. Unless you knew about Pa. But what about Pa? He died. Mighty unusual. Well, it was, in a way. Uh, because it was the whiskey tax that killed him. The whiskey tax? Yeah, broke his heart, I figure. Uh, right there at his deathbed, I vowed that I wasn't going to follow in his footsteps. What footsteps? Pa made the best whiskey in all of Virginia. Folks used to come for miles around. Oh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, he was a regular slave to it. And so was Ma and us youngins. And so when he died and left me some money, I swore I was going to buy a farm and raise some grain so that folks could make bread with it and not have to make the pop skull. Then you met Miss Charity Brown. Not quite. First, I met those fellows from the Daniel Boone Land and Development Company. That's it, I guess. You don't make any more sense than this thing does. Ah, oh, no. It'll work. It'll work all right. All I need now is some corn from the Indians. There are Indians around here, aren't there? Indians? You can't make whiskey with Indian corn? Why not? Grain is grain. All right, you're the expert. You don't want any help. No, here, Ben. I, I need you to lead me to the Indians. But besides, another thing. When I run my first batch, I'd be really grateful if you'd come by and taste it for me. You mean you don't know what this stuff is supposed to taste like, even? Never touch the stuff. Another one of your solemn vows, I suppose. No, I just don't like the taste.
I get here. I left where was Cincinnati two days ago. I've been hunting. What's wrong? You look awful. Here, take a cup. It smells like whiskey. Of course it smells like whiskey. Taste it. I ain't sure that's a real sensible thing to do, Jim. Look, Ben. Charity Brown is gonna marry Samuel Stone next Sunday. Jimmy. Even if you had liquid sunshine in here, you ain't gonna make enough money off of it to stop that wedding by Sunday. Will you just taste it? Shut up and drink that now. It don't look like it's trouble. Well, there is and there ain't. If you're not too busy, Devin, we'd like to talk with you a minute. Well, I don't reckon you'd consider sleeping as being too busy. Then you just come on over here, huh? It's a mite early, isn't it? More like late than early. Well, I take it's important that I take a drink this right now. It is. Where'd you get it? Unbelievable, ain't it? You'll never guess what it's made out of. All right. What is it made out of? Indian corn. Indian corn? Yeah. I suppose that's possible, but we're... Jimmy, Jimmy McGill. McGill! Brought it from Virginia. No, he made it right up there on Bluebird Ridge. Himself. And here, I thought he was a farmer. Well, he is, but he's got this problem. Then you tell him. Jimmy didn't even taste it. That's right. He hates the stuff. He made it for Miss Charity Brown. Charity Brown? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I'm still asleep. Charity Brown? Well, yeah, you know that Miss Charity Brown is going to marry Samuel Stone next Sunday. Well, you know, it's her pa that's, again, her liking Jimmy. If Jimmy ever had any money, why, her pa might look at things a little bit different. That's the only problem. Jimmy's got no money. That's why he made this still up there in the hill. I see. You like it so much, you marry Samuel Stone. Oh, I know, I know. What other man would send all the way to Boston for regular Paris, France silk for his girl's wedding dress? I mean, but I'm only thinking of your best interests, my dear. I mean, you'll have nothing to do but fancy stitching, and you'll spend your evenings watching Samuel strive for perfection. What do you say? I say if he has so much fun with the devil, what would he want with a wife? Why don't we take this wedding dress and give it to some poor deserving orphan? Go away. Uh, no. Will you please go away this instant? Why don't you scream? Uh, uh, just exactly what is it you, you want, Mr. McGill? I want you to call me Jimmy. In the middle of the night? It's as good a time to start, isn't it? Are you going to leave, or am I going to have to... Scream? 
We've been through that. Well, then, just what is it you, you want, Mr... Jimmy. Jimmy. I want you to come over here and give me a kiss. What? Are you heard me? You want me to leave? Well, uh, I certainly do. Yeah. One kiss. Off I go. reason for tormenting me? I only came to tell you that you're not going to marry Samuel Stone on Sunday. What do you mean? Because you're going to marry me. But... Don't worry. By Sunday, I'll be rich. Wait, how are you going to... Shh. Look, do you want to wake your father? Late. He'll be late. I know he will. You don't reckon he got lost? Lost? <laughs> Daniel Boone has been blazing trails clear to Mississippi and further. Now, you don't reckon he's going to get lost going to the next county, do you? All due respects, even Christopher Columbus got lost. <laughs> I... Don't bother, Cincinnati. You won't listen to anybody. Can't wait much longer, Mr. Stone. I'm sure they'll be along directly. around for the last time, Father. But you'll be here often, my dear. Yes, but it won't be the same, will it? Oh, come, child. You don't want to be late to your own wedding, do you? No, no Father. Now, come. Let's go. You will please let us pass, Mr. McGill. Just ain't like Daniel. He should have been here. I told you he wouldn't make it. Do you, Samuel, take this woman, Charity, to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and obey, in sickness or health, 
Till death do you part. I do. And do you, Charity, take this man Samuel for your lawful wedded husband to love, honor, and obey in sickness or in health until death do you part. I do. If there be any man here who knows any reason why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Uh, excuse me, Reverend, for breaking in this way, but well, I think I have something to add to this occasion. Who's that man with Daniel? I don't know. You know a reason why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony? Well, we've uh, come to offer Miss Charity a, a choice before it's too late. I'll thank you, Daniel, to state your business at some other time. Well, I'm afraid some other time won't do, Samuel. Uh, this is Thaddeus King, Reverend. He's the man with the choice. Well? I have come to ask for Miss Brown's hand on behalf of a young fellow who has recently come into a considerable fortune. I fail to see why another man's fortune is good cause for discontinuing this wedding. I am Miss Brown's father, Mr. King. Perhaps you should explain yourself to me. I'd be delighted, sir. Uh, the young fellow in question has yearned for your daughter from afar, sir. And as I understand it, she has not found him lacking in qualities. Uh, but a uh, little more than a pauper when he first cast adoring eyes upon her, he set himself the task of making a fortune in order that he might aspire for her hand. And he did it. Yes, indeed, he certainly did. American ingenuity, uh, together with the pangs of love. It's a combination you can't keep down, sir. You have uh, evidence of this fortune, Mr. King? Yes, sir. Well, it's difficult for me to believe that such an amount can come to such a young man in such a short length of time through honest activity. Precisely how did he come about this money? Well, it is complicated, sir. But simply put, he has um, invented a new use for Indian corn. And as a grateful manufacturer, this is the least I could give him in return for the recipe, for the uh, patent. Well, I don't know. Father, isn't it better to be rich and happy than rich and miserable? What'd you say, Jim? A short prayer. Well, he is an upstanding young man. And he is God-fearing. You have my blessings, my dear. Samuel, I, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I'm sorry for what I said, Mr. Boone. What? Well, about Christopher Columbus. Dan, you had us worried there for a while. Well, it turned out all right in the bed. Yeah, it did. You know Thaddeus King. No, but I'd like to. Howdy. <laughs> Nothing I like better than a happy ending. Well, I'd be a lot happier if they just get rid of this dad blame whiskey tax. Well, that's it. They just did. Oh, I tell you, they took the heart out of me when they passed that ridiculous tax. But yesterday I get word that it's been repealed, and Daniel here comes along with a jug of the best tasting whiskey in the whole world. <laughs> I tell you, it is the happiest day of my life. Here you are, Dan. Hmm. I can just see millions of beautiful jugs of it. What are you going to call it, Thaddeus? Ah, eh, doesn't matter. I'll think of something when I get home to Bourbon County. To the bride and groom. To the bride and groom. Hey.